This is a red burgundy that's steeped in history. The vineyards date back to the 1500s when it was owned by the Dukes of Burgundy. It's now owned by the Donderville family and they've been doing a fantastic job expressing Volnay as a region. And this 2009 Domaine Donderville, it's a premier cru, Claude Duke, but most people consider this clo as a Grand Cru level in quality. So Volnay as a region, of course, has a reputation for its feminine, very aromatic, very elegant character. And this Volnay is no exception. On the nose, you find lovely aromatics of wildflowers and strawberries and lots of rose petals. And on the palate, you'll find a silkiness and, and a kind of minerality that comes specifically from this clove. And from the 2009 vintage, you also get lovely ripe fruits. So it's a challenge for Chef Poutin to make a dish that actually expresses this wine's elegance. Selena and I have been traveling from Paris to Burgundy, looking for inspiration to complete the food and wine pairing mission Janine set us. This last mission is our most challenging mission. We need to create a dish to pair with the final red wine from Burgundy. That's why Selena and I are now here in Chagny, a pretty classic French town in Burgundy with one of the most famous restaurants in the world. So you see, we are today in a very, very special place, right? And meaning a lot to me because it's a place. Actually, I worked here like 25 years ago. I was working there. You know? So this is your first restaurant? It was actually my first three-star Michelin on top of that. Oh. And actually, I left my Poitou. Okay. I did a lot of kilometers. Okay. Then to arrive in Burgundy, so you know the uh, cross France on top of that. Oh, wow. And then arriving here and starting again my first three star Michelin experience at the time, the restaurant. Eric Pra believed the key to good cuisine is the ingredients and create recipe that ends the land without taking away from the product. So today he's bring me to meet with one of his product suppliers, Frédéric. Frédéric was a cook who worked with many great chefs, and now he ran a farm. I had an amazing chat with Eric and Frédéric. We all share one belief, respect the product. Today is my lucky day. First, because we have a beautiful weather. And uh, I think uh, I just want to know a bit from you what we have visited today. I know the pork we have been seeing the, uh, earlier. So what kind of pork is that? It's called Grand Gascon, is it? Yeah, the pigs are Grand Gascon. It's uh, an old breed from France, but uh, not much people uh, breed it still. Yeah. It's very interesting uh, for its uh, rustic uh, character and also for its taste and uh, the taste of the meat. And they're about this size, huh? about uh, up to 180 kilo. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have Guinea fowl. Guinea fowl, yeah. I, I, I see the Guinea fowl. You see, usually the size, even I can get sometimes they're less than two kilo. Yeah. And this one, they're almost like three kilo each. That's almost. A... It's 2.8. Uh, we tend to go at that point of raising them because we think the meat is better. What we do uh, mainly here is um, breeding ancient uh, chicken breeds and um, on one side, uh, breeding them just to have uh, chicken to eat, and on the other side, we breed them so we can um, keep the races alive. Yeah, and I think, the, as you said, the fact uh, that's very important uh, the fact when they are uh, ready to eat, they are more than 120 days, 130 days. Yeah, a lot more. So that's, that's definitely something uh, you will not always find on the market. We grow vegetables uh, because we Starting try this year. Starting this year. And what we try to do here, basically, with all the system here on the farm and what Frédéric Ménager, who is the owner here, yeah. the, what he really wants to do is to create here uh, an ecosystem. So here, uh, farming for us is all about uh, ecology. Yeah. So the basic uh, logic behind it is um, a healthy land will produce healthy animals and we don't want to eat anything else but healthy animals and healthy vegetables and fruits. So and cannot be more free range than what we have right now. We do only free range. We don't have any medical treatments on the, uh, on the animals but we work 
before if some of them are a bit sick we work with uh, an essential oils yeah, or right. uh, plants to treat them yeah. but no chemicals and uh, yeah that's how we work they look very happy huh? i can see them running around so i'm not worried about that so. i think they, 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 they are for the, the most part of the year uh, yeah definitely no that's great i yeah. think our animals maybe that's what we try to do is at the end they have only one bad day in their lives yeah you are kind of I think one. they're happy to be in a in a nice restaurant after that, and I hope I can have some in Hong Kong as well. So I will have that the, the honor later. delicious meal at La Monoise. I'm here to try Chef Laurent's dish and apparently Chef Laurent has worked at La Monoise for two years. Seems like all the good chefs have worked there, same as the Chef Nicolas. today to have uh, Chef Laurent next to me, the chef of a one-star Michelin restaurant, Le Chardonnay. This restaurant is named after the terroir that is situated next to the restaurant where the Chardonnay grapes are grown. So, Chef Laurent, I've heard that uh, you are obviously, you know, you're a really good chef, you do French cuisine, but you also have been to Japan to learn, you know, the techniques of. Yeah. So Chef Laurent basically said that you know, the techniques in Japan is very different, is very precise, and um, also the produce used there is very different. So it's also an inspiration on when you mix with like you know the French cooking, it becomes something very magical and different. The Burgundy wine, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, it actually pairs very well with French and Japanese. So it's just a perfect combination. And uh, Chef Laurent's philosophy is that you know, human, we have five senses and he wants to be, be able to incorporate all the five senses in his dishes meaning you know eyesight you can see that you know the presentation of the food is very detailed it's beautiful in, and it's very you know mouth-watering when you look at it and then the nose of course you can smell you know the produce and you know the meats and of course taste you can actually hear the sounds of the sauce of the food of the, of the ingredients and so he wants to be able to incorporate all the senses while you're eating So my next dish is a fish, it's called Saint-Pierre. Mm, there's a little bit of um, the black powder in there that is a black olive powder. And it's mixed with this fish broth. And the fish broth has lemongrass and um, cafe lime. So the whole dish itself is really refreshing and it makes it opens up your taste buds a lot. And you can tell that every piece of dish here is like an art piece and everything is perfect on this dish. Cooking, presentation, the produce. And he mixes uh, a lot of Japanese ingredients in his dishes as well. So. For an Asian girl like myself, like it's just perfect for my for my palate. And of course, we can't leave out the wine. Um, Chef Laurent also says this can be paired with uh, a Chardonnay. And again, Chardonnay is my favorite white wine, so I'm in heaven. So we have this beautiful Volnay from one of my favorite producers. I think it's maybe the top producer of Volnay, Marquis d'Angerville. Yes. Uh, and it's a 2009, so it should be very sweet and open and ripe because it was such a warm vintage. Uh, and it's one of their top premier crews, which is uh, Monopole, Claude des Ducs. And for me, it's like history in a bottle because this, this vineyard 
has been around for 500 years. Oh, wow. And before the Dondreville family owned it, it was owned by different dukes in Burgundy. And it has this long history of producing beautiful, elegant Pinot Noir. What do you think of the wine, Eric? Well, being a Volnay, mm. it's actually quite approachable. Because <laughs> normally all the wine from that side of, of, of Burgundy tend to be Denny aging. Uh, but Volnay tend to be the, uh, the most approachable. I'm going to prepare the duck. The duck, it will be poached on the bone for 40 minutes at 60 degrees. Then seasoning with salt, then roast in a kai saron cocotte with duck fat or cooking oil, till nicely seared, especially on the fat. Then I will leave it rest for about 10 minutes before serving to have a perfect pink cooking temperature. Love poultry, poultry plenty on the market at the time. Now we have Chalon Duck mm. from the center west. But tell us how Chalon Duck is different from most ducks. Um, it's the, the way they breed the, the duck as well. Mm. And it's the, what we call the, with the blood, they keep the blood inside. So that's why it's more tender and a bit more tasty as well. It doesn't mean other regions they don't do the same. But this one has been very well known from this region there. And actually the wine doing this uh, duck this way, uh, that's why he's getting, the fact to keep the blood inside, he's getting more tender as well. Much tender, you will see, and it's tasty. Vegetable again, funny enough, uh, something I don't usually don't do much, the broccoli. And they told me on the market as well, they said, oh, broccoli is a season right now. I said, oh yeah, I didn't know. So I said, well, work on the broccoli. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now you have the Corsica Clementine. So I said, let's match them together. So the Shalom duck, compared to most duck breasts that you might have, is it lighter or, or richer? Or a little bit richer different? because of the, the fact they keep the blood inside. Ah, a little it's bit, richer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's cooked on the bone, very important. Mm. So okay. please enjoy, bon appétit. Merci. 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 Good, it's right. beautiful. Broccoli. You know, we actually never, I never realized broccoli has season because you usually just see it in the market all the time. And then we found out in, in Paris that they actually have season. He actually, there's a glaze that comes in on the skin. Yes, that's what makes it so it's very sweet. very crispy, yeah. sweet, and it's it kind of like zesty. Like, of course, the wine is, um, I mean, it, it's powerful, but then the, the pairing with like, um, like I said, the skin and the, and, and the duck itself is quite strong. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the pairing is a good balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which one is the leader for you in this pairing? Which one leads? I think the wine is a bit stronger okay. for me anyway. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the wine, which is not uh, negative for the dish, mm -hmm. it just, yeah. it is leading it's by leading. The, the, the flavor. Yes. But yes. what I like is he managed to get some sweetness, yes. but without destroying the flavor of the wine, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. quite a hard balance there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really good uh, matching in terms of making sure that there is a bit of sweetness there, but it's matched mm -hmm. actually perfectly with, with the wine. Tonight, we have two French guests tasting two rounds of this challenging wine pairing menu. First, we have a wine expert. In the second round, we have a food expert. Jenny, what you said about the wine was very, very interesting. And I look forward to the match with the food. Well, thank you. Well, Jacques, I mean, 2009 is a vintage that's so seductive. I can feel it's perfectly cooked because it's tender, which is not always the case with the duck meat. Mm. I have the pleasure of drinking it. A wine which matches food, it's a great pleasure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a specialist with this, it's just yes. a pleasure that you get. It's very personal. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, I, I really enjoyed the, the course. Very balanced, as mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. I love the wine. The combination for me is not ideal. I would expect with a duck something maybe more powerful. Mm. But, see, the wine for me is a little bit too delicate. It's a beautiful wine, mm -hmm. but pairing, I'm going to be very, very tough given my name. Oh, no. that's what so are you pretty. Giving?
pretty. Spade with eight, two beautiful eight. Eight. Oh, that's pretty eight. generous. Actually, I thought you were going to give it a four. I know. Oh, I the way you're I talking. Do this. I was getting goosebumps, right? Because you're talking of two beautiful things, so difficult to give a bad note, but yes. eight is low for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I have to be more generous than you. I thought I thought the duck was beautifully prepared, and with the wine, I would have to give it at least a nine. You know, and if I were being generous and a little biased, like Selena is, yes. I might give it a nine and a half. <laughs> if you had been visiting the ducks with uh, Nicola, maybe exactly, you'd I would have yes. felt the same emotion. Yes. Thank you. Well, it's a very thank nice so experience. Much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for sharing such wonderful wines, and thank you. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Selena. Food and wine pairing is more of an art than a science. And the task that I sent Chef Nicolas Boutin on to pair six different wines with fresh seasonal French ingredients is an exercise exactly representing why it is really an art. So we had classic pairings like Chablis with oysters, which worked beautifully, or scallops with Chenin Blanc from Samuel Blanc, which also worked wonderfully, as you would expect. And then we had surprising matches like Soul with Domaine Furrier Gevry Chambertin, a red burgundy that you wouldn't think would go with such delicate fish, but it did. And so this is why it is really in the art of the preparation, the use of the ingredients, the balance, and the wonderful aromatic quality of both the food and the wine that are able to give each other an enhancement, bringing it both to another level. So when it works, it is a perfect marriage made in heaven. <laughs>